All right, what's up everybody? So as you can probably tell by the title and as you can see by this chart in front of you right here, my arms are officially the biggest they've ever been measuring in at 17.86 inches as of this morning. So I'm very happy with that and it's officially like really close to 18 and it really is just the final stretch and I'm enjoying every second of it. I have to remember a lot of it is just the process uh, and seeing those new little PRs in my measurements and seeing my arms look a little bit bigger and even just seeing like my performance go up on certain lifts. These are all just cool little indicators to kind of just give me that feedback that things are going well. And it's just part of enjoying the process of training. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a results oriented guy and I still enjoy just being jacked than I do the journey of getting jacked. Uh, but I think there's value in just appreciating the process and respecting yourself for all that hard work that you put in. And I'm trying to do that same thing for myself. Uh, and obviously in that same process, show exactly what I do so you can see firsthand what I'm doing to go from an intermediate lifter, striving to become a little bit more advanced. So overall, there is that recent uptick in my arm growth. So I think part of what this is, is me just getting used to what I'm doing at the commercial gym. So obviously with the, the floods, there's actually three floods in the span of about a month over the past obviously month time frame. So I basically just committed to going to the commercial gym instead of trying to keep catching up with the flood, knowing another one's going to happen in a couple days. So I just ditched that idea altogether of training at home and said, you know what, let's just do the commercial gym for this month. So at first, this felt a little bit awkward, uh, not because they're difficult or I'm not good at them or anything, but there's, there's a difference between being able to do a lift just technically speaking, and being able to maximize a lift. So that first lift you're seeing in this clip, the uh, Arsenal Preacher Curl Machine, it looks like a spider curl with my elbows up high, you, pretty much the, the thing you see me do every arm day at the commercial gym. This machine is extremely stable and it's a really well-made machine. It's very well thought out. The engineering behind it is perfect. The guys that made it knew exactly what they were doing and it's a beautiful machine. With that being said, if I've never done that machine before and I go to try it, I'm not going to be able to maximize my force output on that machine because my body isn't used to that movement pattern. And that's part of the skill of lifting. Yes, a machine bicep curl is pretty low skill. But when I first started using that machine, my hands would shake a little bit. The grip, I didn't feel stable because my body had no idea where the bar was going to go. It didn't know how to prepare for the resistance profile when it gets heavier, when it gets lighter throughout the range of motion. And these are all little things that you can say, does this really matter? Just go lift. It doesn't matter. And I would agree with that to an extent, but there's no denying that the better you are at a lift, the more proficient you are in a lift, the more muscle fibers you can activate. And you can tell just by your fatigue and how exhausted you feel after doing it because your body's recruiting everything it possibly can. And by nature, that's going to be more fatiguing than just doing a lift that you don't have high skill on. That's why beginners can like train to quote unquote failure on a lot of uh, free weight compound lifts and they're ready to go for another set 30 seconds or a minute later. And if you take like an advanced power lifter that's incredibly proficient at like a deadlift, they, they rest like eight, 10 minutes between sets. And even then they're just incredibly fatigued because one set can just kill you basically. So another lift that you're seeing me do here is these machine dips. Uh, these, I almost see these as a decline JM press. It is more biased to a press than it is an extension where the, the technique I use on my Smith JM press is really a perfect hybrid. You can see if you look at the angle, my elbows do sink much uh, further than my wrists do, much closer to shoulder level. If you were to put like a, a, a pad behind my back to give you a visual on that. It is a little bit more of a press, so I am going to be recruiting a lot of front delts at a decent amount of pecs, but my elbow bend is so extreme on this for it being a compound uh, movement that it's still going to be tricep dominant. So I'm actually considering getting, getting one of these for the home gym, but we'll see. But basically what I'm trying to say to kind of bring, bring this back to what I was talking about at first, I think a lot of the reason why I had this uptick in growth is because I'm finally adapting to these new movements and I'm becoming proficient in my skill on each lift. So when I first started in the commercial gym about a month ago, 
Not that I didn't go there every now and then anyways, but it was inconsistent. Now that I've been doing it consistently, I've become very good at these movements and enough to really start to see that growth. So I'm not surprised that about three, four weeks in of doing this very consistently, the growth kind of just appeared. I think it's because the last couple sessions on each one of these lifts has been very potent. And the Adapt shorts from Barbell Apparel have officially dropped. I already talked about the Adapt joggers a couple weeks ago when those came out. These are basically the same thing. Uh, a couple minor changes, obviously. Uh, but they're basically the, the joggers, but in shorts form. So there's a couple extra pockets on these that the joggers don't have. Uh, but they do have the same fit and they have the same structured waistband, which I think is key. Uh, I've always been sick of buying shorts that have too big of a waist or getting shorts that fit the waist but are too small and too tight on my legs. So these solve that issue and they fit perfectly. And I also wanted to touch on one other thing about what's what I think a big factor is that's led me to see this growth as of late, really of the past six, eight, ten months where I've gone from 16, 16 and a half all the way up to just about 18. I think a, a huge portion of it is stability uh, and a length and bias resistance profile. And I talk about this stuff all the time, but I, I can't overstate how important it is. When you're using a lift that is stable, so something like this machine preacher curl, where my elbows and my upper arm are wedged onto the pad, there's no room for tension to leak. Every ounce of my effort is going directly to the biceps. If I'm doing a standing curl, my shoulders can move around, my elbow angle can change, my upper arms can shift outwards or inwards. And as you approach failure, your body wants to take the path of least resistance and activate your, your body doesn't want your muscle to go to failure. Your body wants to preserve energy. So when you're using an incredibly stable lift, it's going to be a strict movement. And that's part of the reason why I think having a length and biased resistance profile is better uh, when you're doing a strict movement. But I'll, I'll touch on that either later if I have time or in just another video entirely. But there's something about being on a movement that has very good external stability it allows you to just put every ounce of your force production into that muscle that you're trying to target and there's no leaking tension. Even on something like the easy bar curl that I'm doing here, it's an excellent movement. I'm not telling you not to do it. Obviously, I'm doing it here mostly because everything else was taken and I couldn't find anything else to use. But I think there's just something unique and something very potent, especially as you get more advanced, about movements where you really can't cheat in every every ounce of your effort goes to the target muscle. So with that being said, that's all I got for today. If you have any questions on this topic or on resistance profiles or anything like that, let me know and I'll probably answer it in the next video if it's a good question.